Good afternoon or good morning to you all, uh, wherever you're joining us from. So we've got a lot that we'd like to uh, cover today. Um, and I'm going to start by introducing Fujifilm Diasynth Biotechnologies. I'm then going to move on to talk about Apollo, our new mammalian expression platform, concentrating on development of a new host cell line and work we've done on the cell line development process itself. I'm then going to hand over to my colleague, Stuart McNall, who will talk about media and feed development, and that's both for the Apollo system and for uh, client cell lines. And then finally, he's going to touch on our use of single-use technologies. So if we start with the uh, introduction to Fujifilm, I'm willing to bet that when you saw the company name Fujifilm Dysynth Biotechnologies, that a number of you out there started thinking about cameras. The company name may be still new to you, but we certainly aren't. You'll probably recognize the names Diasynth from North Carolina, USA, and Avicia from the northeast of the UK. Well, we were brought together about five years ago now to form Fujifilm Diasynth Biotechnologies. So again, the name may be new to you, but we aren't, and we have many, many years of CGMO experience. And from this slide, you can see some of this experience highlighted. So you can see we've got a strong track record in both the microbial and the mammalian field. and We've worked on 230 molecules. Because today is uh, concentration on the mammalian side, I'd say around 40 of those are in mammalian systems. Uh, it also highlights here that we have five commercial projects. So our mission statement at Fujifilm highlights our commitment to continuous innovation of technologies, services delivery, and quality. And this commitment to innovation is clearly shown over the last few years, where we've spent over 20 FTT, FTE years uh, further developing systems and approaches which rapidly lead to efficient, robust, and high-quality biomanufacturing processes. And this has included the introduction of the Apollo Mammalian Expression Platform, a streamlined approach to analytical development and process development, and development of a single-use platform for manufacturing that's well proven in um, GMP manufacturing. Why do we do all this innovation? It's simply so that we can add value to clients and give them what they need. So I'm now going to move on and talk about the Apollo Mammalian Expression Platform. The platform itself was launched in October and it includes every element needed to progress from gene to manufacturing. So it includes HODG44 um, host cell line, it includes a DHFR expression vector, um, it includes the cell line development process itself, and finally it includes media and feed optimization. So I'm going to look in a little bit more detail, first of all, about the host cell line that is part of the Apollo platform. So the host cell line is derived from CHO DG44. It's adapted to chemically defined medium and suspension culture. We used a directed evolution approach to uh, obtain this new host cell line, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in the coming slides. And out the end of that directed evolution, we were looking to select a host cell line which had superior growth characteristics and expression capability. And then finally, we do have a fully characterized CGMP cell bank of that host cell line with maximum traceability. So as I said, we're going to look a little bit more at the directed evolution approaches uh, that we've taken. So what we initially did is we initially adapted the CHO DG44 host cell line to chemically defined media and to suspension culture. We then wanted to develop that host cell line further to get an improved host cell line. We could have gone down the cell line engineering route, but in discussion we recognized that there were lots of challenges with this approach. So for example, what do you target? And do you have to target multiple targets? And then what about the IP and cost implications? And if you do have to engineer multiple targets, how long will that take you? So instead, we went down a direct evolution approach. And what such an approach allows is it allows you to utilize the functional heterogeneity that's already present within the CHO host cell population. So in basic terms, you apply some kind of pressure onto your original host cell population, and you look to select out a subpopulation with desirable characteristics. 
So we used four different methods for direct devolution. Two of them are really simple and things that you'll probably routinely do with your cells. So cloning and altering the subculture regime. The other two were a little more complex. So we used the facts whereby what we did is we allowed the cells to grow up to a maximum viable cell density and then start to decline. And when they were in the decline phase, we sorted them through a fax to enrich for those cells that were still viable. And we repeated that cycle a number of times. And the final route we tried was use of a chemostat. After we'd completed using these rounds of direct evolution, we'd actually whittled down to 77 potential new host cell lines. And we then started comparing them side by side, and we dropped 25 cell lines, and then five, and then two, before we finally picked one cell line as our Apollo host cell line. When we were assessing the cell lines as we went through that process, we thought about what attributes we wanted a host cell line to have and what we needed it to do, and we designed the screens around this to find that best host cell line. <coughs> 